We are pleased to bring you this brand new episode of Life Questions focusing on the coronavirus. Our panel of pastors will share with you thoughts from both the health standpoint and the spiritual state. Now we feel it's important to let you know this episode was taped before Governor DeWine started making directives and mandates affecting organizations and individuals here in Ohio. As you watch this today, please keep that in mind. Also keep in mind, we still serve a mighty God who is stronger than any sickness. Hello everyone and welcome to Live Questions. I'm your host, Bill Harris. At the time of this show's taping, it appears that we in a, are in a national crisis due to the coronavirus. As Christians, we have an obligation to pray for our country. Number one, for our nation's leaders, that they will provide leadership. And two, for the general public, that God will protect us from the spread of this deadly virus. Now, specifically, what is the role of the church during such a crisis? But we want to discuss this as well as other important issues confronting this country. And today we are joined by a panel of local ministers whom we have asked to come and share their expertise. I'd like to introduce them to you at this time. First, we have Dr. Timothy White, pastor of Lima First Missionary Church, followed by Pastor Brad Taylor of the Lima Community Church. Then Pastor Chris Ewing of the County Line Church of the Brethren. And rounding off our panel is Pastor Jonathan Hanover of the Kenton First United Methodist Church. Gentlemen, we welcome all of you to today's program. Happy well, to have you. Thank you, you very thank much. You. Good to be here. Yeah. It, uh, it, it's, it's a crisis. Uh, every time we have a crisis, I mean, it takes off on its own spin, you know. This is a, an extremely serious one. It, it, it's leaving death in its pathway. It's um, a lot of destruction. It has even affected our economy, and it has even affected uh, the stock market. What, gentlemen, would you say is the role of the church during such a crisis? We'll begin with you, Pastor Chris. Um, well, personally, I'm not. I'm not worried about it a whole lot. Um, as long as you do your dil due diligence, um, you know, wash your hands, all those kind of things. Um, you let, for us at, at our church, um, you know, we have our bathrooms all have, you know, soap sanitizer in it. We have sanitizer in the foyer. We have sanitizer in our children's wing. Um, we have sanitizer on our um, welcome center. Um, so we have not addressed it as a church, really, but we have just continually throughout day to day, month to month, year to year um, life, we have just always um, have done these things. So for me, it's just um, just like any other flu season, um, those kind of things of you wash your hands, you, you know, do everything you can. You, you know, if you're taking vitamins, you take your vitamins to keep healthy. Um, if you're sick, um, for me as a pastor, if I'm ever sick, doesn't matter if it's during this time of period or not, I don't go visit my, you know, shut-ins or anybody at the hospital. I stay away from them until I uh, am Did well again. Mm -hmm. sure. But that's a normal courtesy thing, in my sure, opinion, yeah, sure. those kind of things. So um, when I'm done shaking hands at the door, I always go immediately wash my hands after hand because you just don't know anything. Um, so that's kind of how we're handling it as a church. Um, but for me personally, I'm not really worried about it as long as you do what um, everybody is suggesting that you do and simply just take care of yourself and um, wash your hands. Yeah. Yes. Well, it has certainly heightened my personal level of awareness when I visit or when, when I engage with the congregation, for sure. Um, I, have a, I haven't addressed directly the congregation yet. You know, it hasn't come to our front step, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. it, 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 May, um, and the map looks like it. We're surrounded, yes. so it could happen any time. Uh, I suppose the, the time for discussion um, in our families and, and 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 together. You know, we need, uh, as Chris just uh, had had reiterated, do our due diligence. We don't we don't need to panic and we don't need to fear. I think spiritually speaking, that's certainly the advice. Uh, that there, there's no cause for extreme panic and extreme fear and alarm. But we do need to uh, raise and heighten our level of awareness mm -hmm. and take some extra precautions, especially for our young and the most vulnerable, our elderly. Um, or we have those that have underlying health conditions that we need to be uh, looking out for yeah. in particular. But uh, uh, we, we haven't bought into a frenzy. And uh, I, I don't know that that's, that's really the Christian perspective yeah. uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I think there's a, a fine line between panic and prudent, you yeah. know, and, and that's, that's you know, we need to find that, uh, that place of prudence. And I certainly agree with what you guys are saying. Um, specifically, I would say about caring for, for the vulnerable in our, in our midst, um, you know, just recognizing that as, as members of the body of Christ, we have a responsibility to the community. And, um, you know, Chris, what, what you share about kind of the, the uh, habits that you practice when you visit people, I think are good at a time like this for us to remember that, uh, you know, if you have a fever, um, you know, we, we value a work ethic, a particular work ethic here. But if you have a fever, stay home. Mm -hmm. You know, that's OK. Like that's mm -hmm. that's what our community that that would be best for the whole for, you know, when you have a cough, when you have a fever, whatever it might be. And, you know, to yeah. use that prudence and, um, you know, whatever it is that you can do. And in the midst of, of those prudent things, we remember that we cast our anxieties on him, Amen. you know. Yes. And, Amen. And he, uh, Dr. White was just yes. talking about that one, the, the fear factor that we, sure. we, we have to minimize it. Don't you think that, Pastor Hanover, that the best way to fight against fear is to provide good, accurate information? Right, and I think it's to be a calm yeah. voice and the midst of all of this anxiety and if it's not the anxiety over this we just live in a, a society that's anxious so to provide some calm information um, some information that doesn't have um, uh, kind of any motivations otherwise to help calm our people I think it's also worth remembering too that especially in this time of Lent um, mm -hmm. our, our memento mori tradition in the Christian faith remembering that we are mo mortal that so influences Ash Wednesday came out of the bubonic plague <laughs> and the church's response there. How fitting now huh. for us to remember in the time of Lent wow. that we are mortal that is. and that our hope is ultimately in something that's way beyond what is happening here and now. Yeah. It came out of the bubonic plague. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. My goodness. Isn't that... Uh, <clears throat> that's, that'll preach. <laughs> so there's your next sermon. I'm taking notes. Yeah. 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 That's right. yeah. And that plague didn't that wipe out like a third of Europe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was on, uh, on a scale would be so much more than what we would corona be facing today. Yeah, but right, that's right. the reminder that ultimately um, decisions of life and death are beyond us. Amen. Um, and our hope is, is in something beyond that. Amen. For sure. Yeah. That's right. Very good. Yeah. What, are you, what are you telling uh, your folks specifically? Are you giving any instructions, any of you? Uh, giving any instructions on we what to do, what not to do? We have not started giving anybody any instructions. Because um, people like to shake hands when they're church. Some people like to hug. Yes. Uh, I know my bishop has said, that let's dispense with the shaking of the hands and just bump fists or, you know, you can bump elbows, that kind of thing. Is there anything like that in any of your churches yet that you've enacted? Yeah, we, um, we actually had it come up around communion and some concerns about ah. serving communion in there. And um, so we just did a reminder, we always try to do communion in a way that, um, that makes sense of that and is aware of some of those issues. But al also then a reminder that um, in the 2,000 years of Christian history, no one has died taking communion. <laughs> so I think we can trust that. Uh, you got the stats no on that. Died. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, there, there was actually research done a few years ago, and no one has died in the, in the history of making <laughs> <and> taking <laughs> communion. So yeah. it's it's we trust in that. Very yeah, good. I think similar to what you were saying, Bill, we um, just this past weekend for the first time encouraged our greeters to you know, maybe maybe use a fist bump instead of a handshake. Mm -hmm. um, and we dispensed with our greeting time, you know, a time that that in the middle of our worship service, people really enjoy to just greet one another mm -hmm. and shake hands mm -hmm. and hug. And, um, you know, and, and honestly, we've done that several times over the last few years during flu season. It's just sort of courteous, I think, to people because, um, you know, some of us are maybe a little more antsy about germs and things like that yeah. than others. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know, another quirky thing about this, is among the most vulnerable, as you said earlier, Dr. White, are the elderly. Yes. And which brings into play, what do we do then about the ministry and the outreach to the elderly? Yeah. How do you handle a situation like that? If they're the most vulnerable and you're going to the nursing home to minister to them, when they, in fact, may be the first ones to get it, mm -hmm. I, 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 what do you do? And we, and we do minister to those people and we do visit those facilities and I, I don't I haven't come to the place where I've changed any protocol we've always tried to be wise and discreet we, we've always tried to be uh, I love your word prudent uh, we have always tried to be prudent there but they are m statistically more vulnerable than than the average uh, person medically speaking I don't know what I can do medically for them in terms of uh, 
raising their immunity to this or mm -hmm. shielding them or sheltering them. Um, I don't know. I, I don't have any. Um, well, there's some things that you can do to minister to them still. So, you know, if you're sick, you know, I, you know, if you're visiting, right. then you make a phone call. Right. You know, um, and if, if they're in the hospital, if you're fine and you're still worried about it, there's a sanitizer in every single hospital room. Um, I know exactly where the bathrooms are in, yeah. in the hospitals that I normally visit because wash your hands before you go and wash your hands after you go. There's a lot of those different things. Um, and then the hospital is really on top of a lot of those things. You can you know, talk to the nurses um, station before you go into a room if you have any um, questions of, of where they're at, what they're dealing with, those kind of things. Um, they usually have signages on their doors. So you know, the visitation wise um, with hospitals, it's really not an issue for, you know, to me. Um, now nursing homes a little bit different. They, some of them are a little bit more free coming and going. So you just have to be a little bit more you know, um, consider it with that. Wash your hands before you go, make sure that you're completely healthy, make sure that they're not battling anything um, with a pneumonia or something like that. Um, so it really is just come down to, for you yourself, be considerate uh, of the people you're visiting, your, the people you're ministering to, um, their needs, what their expectations are. Um, a lot of people have told me, you know, hey, I'm not gonna shake your hand today. I, I've been sick and great, mm -hmm. fantastic, yeah. thank you. Yeah. You know, um, so we've had a couple of people that were out with the flu this, you know, for two weeks and they were back last week and, you know, they were 100 percent, but they didn't come to make everybody else sick. Now they just had normal flu. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, again, it's just being considerate from those um, different aspects of things for the people around you. Um, but, you know, our role is to minister and to share the gospel. And so we don't want to stop sharing the gospel, you know, because yeah. of you know, this fear. We want to sit, just be considerate do our job, do what God called us to do, um, and, and put everything else in his hands. Things would change for me personally if there was a corona patient or someone who tested positive in a nursing home that I was visiting. Oh, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. that changes all perspective now. Sure. Now I've got to do something differently and I have to reevaluate what I want to do in terms of ministry. And, um, but right now, you know, uh, the we haven't, faced that here in Ohio yet. So it's time to begin thinking about those things though, I suppose. And Chris, I, I think one of the most important things you said in your response to that was the idea of a phone call. You know, we are, mm -hmm. we are pastors. We, we desire a pastoral touch with our people, the, the opportunity to minister to them in that way. And there have been times during my career, I, I mean, countless times that a person has been in the hospital or a family member in the hospital or you know, it, some sort of circumstance where a po pastoral touch was needed that I was out of town or sick or whatever the circumstances were. And a phone call means a lot to those people sure, during that yeah. time. It's not you sure. know, any I, less uh, effective. I, so. um, I learned that a long time ago because I had, a, uh, when I was a youth pastor um, now 15 years or so ago, I had a student that actually had TB and I was asked to go pray with them. Mm -hmm. And I had just, my, my daughter was just born. She's only a few months old. Oh, wow. And so I'm trying to figure out all this. And, and it, it spoke the world because I, I clearly explained, I cannot expose myself because you know I have my family to consider and, and all this. And I had to have my entire family tested for TB. And, mm -hmm. um, but I made a couple phone calls to them, prayed with them, talked with them. And, and that will actually, speak the world to them sure. um, because you are still considerate, you know, like they understand if you explain it to them, but they, you still took time out of your day yeah. to minister to them and to let them know that you're there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so. they could be under quarantine and we could still minister by, Absolutely. by phone, right. as right. you indicated, yeah. or, or even FaceTime, FaceTime or you whatever. Know, yeah. whatever. So yeah. Yeah. maybe not the technology is even better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure so. how that would work. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there's the whole element of fear as I said earlier, that, 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 that is rooted from the, the lack of information. I want to bear down on that a little bit more. We're going to take a break. When we come back, I'd like to deal with that fear factor and what you are doing, what you can be doing to alleviate fear. Particularly, as we know, it will probably get more into Ohio than it has been uh, just recently. We'll deal with that and more right after this. Stay with us.
don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pasture suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back and we're glad you could stay with us. We wanted to talk a little bit more about the fear factor. People are quite anxious. Uh, they're watching the news, what's happening around the world and in this country. Now they're seeing it getting closer and closer and closer to them. How do we incorporate spirituality to deal with this as much as we do medically and uh, socially and otherwise? How do we deal with this spiritually? Yeah, we have to approach it both ways. Uh, we talked about earlier how to deal with some things and do some due diligence, but spiritually, uh, where, where should the Christian be focused mm -hmm. right now? I love what the Apostle Paul wrote in his letter to the church at Philippi from a Roman prison, mm -hmm. rat infested, wet, damp, dysentery, mm -hmm. all this around, and he writes to them and says, hey guys, be anxious for nothing but in everything, by prayer and supplication with gratitude, make your requests known to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, all human reasoning, mm -hmm. will protect your hearts and protect your minds through Christ Jesus. I can't tell you how many times I have had to take refuge in that particular verse yeah, of, yeah. in scripture. It's not just a buff bunch of fluffy words. <laughs> this, is from, this is from a man who was in prison, who was chained in a dark, damp, dingy, the stench alone must have been unbearable. Yeah. And here he is telling the people at, 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 in Philippi who have everything, they're home with their families every night, they they're, have abundant wealth, and he's telling them, hey, don't get excited. Don't get anxious. Mm -hmm. But in everything, make your requests known to God, and his peace will cover you in time of distress. There's a distinction. You're saying his peace, not the world's peace. Not the world's peace, but, but the peace of God. And I like to capitalize that P in peace because <laughs> I believe that is Christ himself mm -hmm. that Excellent. covers us. Excellent. You know, earlier in our conversation, Pastor Jonathan just mentioned the, the reality that at a time like this, we are reminded that our hope is in something more. It's, it's not in things of this world. And really that, you know, I think in, in terms of a pastoral, a, a Christian response to fear, to panic, you know, at a time like this, um, it, this, is, this is a great passage of scripture. You know, there's, there's a lot of scripture we could turn to. Sure. Uh, you know, Second Timothy, God has not given us a spirit of fear, sure. but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline, right? I mean, these are, these are the, the logical things that we ought to think about. But, but it's also good for us to just reflect, and it's easy to do during Lent, to reflect on the reality that uh, whatever panic and, and uh, chaos is happening around us, we have our hope in something different, in, in uh, you know, a God whose character doesn't change, mm -hmm. and, and you know, that reality that it's beyond what our circumstances are. Yes. Pastor Hanover, do you, do you take what they're saying or do you think, uh, as some people might be thinking out there, well, you know, these are all just very nice words that ministers are supposed to say, but we're dealing with a real <laughs> crisis here. Where, where do you come from, from that, I'm Pastor? No, I, I, I completely agree. And that's not to say that the circumstances of today don't cause great pain and don't cause great difficulty. They certainly do. Sure. Um, but we are reminded that, again, our hope is in something ultimately um, much further. The fear right now is used to um, sell products. It's used to motivate people. Um, there are a lot of people that, that uh, take advantage of fear and anxiety, and it's worth remembering um, the calm presence and that God promises to be with us, uh, that the Holy Spirit is still with us, and no matter what we can suffer from here, that will not change. Um, we've read the end of the book. We still know that the <laughs> kingdom of God will still come, yes. and the circumstances now may be trying and may be yes. difficult, uh, but we can ultimately um, it will not take away our, our ultimate hope. That's right. And I think that's the most important thing. Through all this, Christ needs to be preached. His gospel needs to be spread. 
there are still people needing of healing beyond just this coronavirus. There are people that are hurting, that, that you know, um, need to be ministered to, and things like this, again, do our due diligence, but we need to make sure that we are presenting Christ before them and that we are doing the job that God called us to do, whatever that is. For us as pastors, is preach his word to, to our flocks that God has, has given us, to those individuals that are part of our um, bodies. Um, it's, it's for them to fill the, the calling and the commitment that God has called them to do. Um, you know, and so that really needs to be on the forefront of the mind, even, even through all of this that we're saying. That's what, that's our hope. That's our desires as pastors is that, you know, our opportunity to spread the gospel, to spread the good news, the, the restoration of Jesus needs to happen, should happen, is happening. And the coronavirus is just there. Yeah. I mean, it's just there. Would it be, would it be expedient? Would it be helpful to have a medical doctor perhaps or somebody on the that has a medical background come to a to a church or to go around to different churches and tell them about the natural aspects and what can be done naturally to protect oneself and to prepare oneself for the onslaught of this virus and joining linking arm in arm with a minister for instance like yourself being the local host of a church uh, gi giving the spiritual aspect i mean with, with that with those two working together provide a holistic ministry to our congregation that is so an anxious right now sure could you see that mm, i could see yeah. the balance we've done it today here on the show yeah. and we've, we've provided both aspects and um, what i'm not qualified to speak on medically right i i would feel qualified more to speak about mm -hmm. how paul was so calm in a time when death he faced death mm -hmm. like it could have uh, overtaken him at any time Yet he said, to live is Christ, to die is gain. So either way, I win. If I live, mm -hmm. I get to continue preaching. And if I die, I get the glories of heaven. Mm -hmm. So either way, he says, I win. There was a peace and a calmness about him that I can present to the congregation. Medically, the, the steps taken necessary that you need to take um, from, a, from a professional uh, perspective, I think can be very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's also uh, <clears throat> quite weighty coming from Paul, given his background mm -hmm. as one who before Christ came into his life was actually persecuting and killing and imprisoning yes. yeah. uh, Christians. Yeah. And uh, now to hear him make that testimony yeah. is, is all the more weighty. Especially under the circumstances that he was under. Right? Yes, right. yes. This is a man who, who, was, who was always in control yeah. and was calling the shots. And now he's in prison. He's confined to, a very, to very small quarters and the like. But he's still confident in his God. Amen. Um, Amen. Yeah. And I, I can see where we need that kind of confidence during this type of a situation. And that's so. where we can be, you know, like us as a body of Christ, we can be that, that calmness in the storm for the rest of our culture because everything is in a frenzy right now. You know, whether it doesn't matter, it, it just seems like everybody's blowing it up. And there needs to be that calmness to bring out the facts, to bring out the reality of where we're at and, and for people to have a calm mind to deal with this, to deal with it in wisdom versus in fear. And, and that's what, what we as Christians can be, be because we do have that peace that Christ brings us. And we can, we can help spread that and, and help our, our, our communities actually go through this, this process in a healthy way. Pastor Brad, we <clears throat> turn the television on and we see an example of the world's peace. That's, that's right. That's not that's right. real good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, How's the, that working out for so you? So <laughs> there's, a, there's an old adage that, uh, that adversity builds character. And I think the more biblical uh, approach to that is that adversity reveals character. Uh -huh. And the adversity that is happening in the world right now is revealing the world's like peace, the, yes. the, the world's inability to deal with a, a crisis of this magnitude and we see it in you know you mentioned the market is going up and down and nobody knows what to do and and as the body of Christ Chris like you said the the opportunity that we have when when life circumstances press in on us what comes out well mm -hmm. Christ needs to come out mm -hmm. and and that is that is the peace of Christ that we can have mm -hmm. and the calm presence that we can be for that the world. that's right for yeah. the world yeah. around us okay. absolutely right absolutely you right. know the markets in, during periods of uncertainty you're always going to get the market to react negatively yeah. the markets <laughs> don't like uncertainty yeah. Yeah. which leads to my next question it's it's sad to have to say this but 
politics. Surprise, surprise, <laughs> politics has also entered this. And there are people on both sides of the political aisle that are spreading information. Sometimes it's misinformation. And it tends to compound the fear and the anxiety you know, that goes on. How do you, how do you gentlemen counsel against that oh, I tell <laughs> without, being, without being yeah. a partisan? Yeah, no, I, I tell people to look for the silver lining and all that. Okay, yes, markets are down. But if you need to refinance your house, it's perfect time. It is. I mean, mortgage rates are yeah. extremely, the interest just rates went are down, down low. Just went down another half and, point. Um, the only reason I know that is because, you know, we're looking to, to move and stuff. But, um, you know, it's, it's, you look at some of these things, it's, it's a great opportunity to invest, you know, and now we want to do that wisely and we want to yeah. do that under God's guidance. Yeah, I heard somebody say, pardon me, I heard somebody say the other day, look at the markets now just the way you're told to do with your face. Don't touch it. Yeah. <laughs> don't, yeah, you don't. Don't touch your exactly. 401k, you know, That's that kind right. of thing. But if you're looking to invest, like initially go into uh -huh. it, it's actually a good time. Because the market's So low. there Price are things low. that, you know, a lot of us are focusing on the, the negative and the bad and in, in those aspects, but there's a lot of good underlining things that, that are going on. Hey, I mean, gas prices are down, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's good, and that's, that's a result of some of all of this stuff. And so, you know, when you actually start changing your perspective and changing your outlook on it and actually allow God to, to reveal himself in the midst of it, you can begin to see good. And I'm just spewing some things from a worldly standpoint. Now, if we put God's eyes to it, where are the opportunities for us to move forward as a body of Christ? Where's the opportunities for us to bring salvation to even just one person? Where's the, the aspect where we actually get to sit down and have conversations and spend time together as family and, and, and to learn and to grow together? And, and to tackle these issues together versus, well, I can't touch anybody and, and I can't. No, we need to do this as a body of Christ together and go forward and, and to proclaim the goodness of Christ. And, and, and like I said, we can be that stillness of the, the peace, the calm in the storm. And I think is a great opportunity really as a, as a church in the midst of this to speak truth and strength. That and, can only be found in Christ. You, and if your faith is in anything other than Jesus Christ, if your faith is in your 401, <laughs> yes. if, if your hope and your faith is in your health, yeah. when that bottoms out, we see panic yeah. and yeah, we see anxiety. Sure. And you are on a unsure foundation. You are on a shaky foundation. But if your faith and your hope is in Jesus Christ, the sure foundation, the solid rock, it doesn't matter what winds of adversity come, we will not be shaken. That's his promise to us. Yeah. I think it's great for, for us to bring to our people to, to encourage them to have a healthy sense of cynicism. And they're talking about with politicians <laughs> who are taking advantage of this. Yeah. And this will not be the last crisis by any means. There will be something no, Jonathan, probably no. next yeah, summer yeah. And, and especially right now in an election season and yes. um, all these other seasons that we're facing. There are always people who, because peer, fear is a powerful motivator, mm -hmm. there will always be people yes. that are trying to use that for their own yes. um, purposes. Yeah. And so it's good to teach our people to have a healthy sense of cynicism to say, um, are the purposes of, of this political party or this company that is spreading this fear, are they aligned with my purposes? No. Mm -hmm. And therefore to be able to take a healthy sense of cynicism to that and some calmness. Yeah. To I'm going to have to leave it at that. I, I like that. Very well That's put. Very that, 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 that gives us a good wrap up, Pastor Hannah. We thank you very much. All of you, it's been a very good discussion. We certainly hope that our audience has gleaned an awful lot from this that will help carry us through this crisis. And, you know, you gentlemen have done such a good job. We're going to invite you all back next week. Oh, <laughs> have you yeah, come back on the panel next yeah. week. Thank you for being with us uh, in our audience today, and be sure to tune in again next week. They will be back with us, and we'll have a new round of discussion about some of the other major things in this country. See you next week. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 
100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Life Questions. We again want to remind you that this episode was taped in our studio before Governor DeWine started issuing specific mandates. We know that every pastor on our panel is concerned about your safety and the safety of his congregation. If you have any questions or simply just need to talk to someone about this situation, you can call us at 419-339-4444.